Welcome back to the Frosty Sith channel and tonight we're just going to be doing a May garden tour kind of uh, walking around taking a look at the garden where things are at and uh, what we're doing next stay tuned here we go Okay, so um, this is a brown turkey fig tree, and we brought this back from Georgia last November, first week in December, and I was concerned that it had died because everything is, you know, pretty crispy on it. Well, maybe that's not. But you can see that it's starting to grow some new uh, greenery, and get going so we're just gonna keep it reasonably watered um, we're not really we've had a little bit of granular fertilizer but mostly we're just taking um, cold brew coffee grounds that are left over and dressing top dressing the area with those periodically and we're not doing a lot more for nutrition for the brown turkey fig and then these are nasturtiums around the outside and uh, they're just getting going. So come over here, and I have to fight the shadow, my shadow, a little bit. But uh, we got pepper plants, and they're all looking okay. We've had uh, some cool nights the last few days, uh, which have been a little bit, you know, peppers don't really like that. And going from, we had a week of 97, 98 degrees with evenings in the 70s. And then to drop back into the 40s is just uh, kind of a pain. This is a variegated nasturtium. I'll be interested to see that one bloom, but uh, that's going to be pretty interesting. And we got some volunteer basil coming up in there, and we're just going to have to keep that trim back because otherwise they get huge. So uh, I didn't cut those. I didn't pull the roots out last year from three plants that I had going there, and they get big like a shrub. Um, We've got a pot with uh, a pepper in it there, and it got a little bit of shock with the variation in temperature, and uh, but it's starting to bush back out now. And then that's an overwintered pepper in the back in the grow bag that we tried to overwinter, and that didn't work out. I need to get that cleaned up. And then we've got 15 Buena Mulattas running right down the edge. See some petunias in there and some calendula right there. This is our garlic. And we love to do garlic every fall. It is super easy uh, to grow and it overwinters well. We've got tomatoes on this uh, raised bed with the cattle panel trellis. And uh, we've got a couple of slicers there. Three of those uh, we use wall of water over the winter. So this one right here, that next big one right there. I mean, you can, you can visibly tell and then that one, the tall, super sweet 100. So this first one is a variety called Carbon. And then we've got uh, two down from that starts the next variety, which is Prudence Pride. And then we got super sweet 100 and a chocolate cherry to or chocolate pear tomato. And then a five star, which we probably won't grow again. It doesn't seem real vigorous right now. Um, carrots are doing great, and then we got lettuce and beets going there, and we're eating lettuce greens as fast as we can and still can't eat them fix enough, uh, fast enough um, to keep the bed clean, so we'll just have to plant less next time. And we got some radishes. We'll look at those in a minute. But uh, the high temperatures basically made them bolt. And we've got mo more peppers here. We've got some habanadas. I think there's some churachia peppers in there, nasturtiums. We've got a seven pot um, yellow primo here in this pot. Need to pick up a few boards. This is a new raised bed this year and we've got some onions in here, a couple of volunteer plants. The pepper in the middle there is a Tabasco and I'm anticipating it's gonna be pretty big. And then we got fenugreek behind that on the outer edge. Uh, spinach, and again, just been eating a lot of this spinach, but uh, the leaves are huge. 
And that's great because these make great taco shells. So if you like taco, you can take a couple of these leaves, shingle them up, and it makes a, a great alternative to a flour tortilla. I think it's a kale's doing good over there. And then we tried this year with the brassicas, at least the cabbages, savoy type cabbages. We put nets on both of these to begin with. Uh, this one is still in a net, and that's because none of the, you know, wormy insects have really gotten in there and caused a lot of damage. This one was getting a, a pretty good bit of pressure, and so we took the netting off and just started squishing caterpillars that had gotten in there. But you can see the head is uh, heading up really nice. So excited about that, and uh, Brussels sprouts looking good. And this is just the backside of the tomatoes, and they're all looking super healthy and great. So excited about them. Petunias, got a little bit of celery there. So that's all great. This year we're growing our summer squash in pots, and so on this side we've got uh, a black beauty zucchini that's growing in this pot. We started with two seeds and just picked the dominant seed and pinched the other one out. These two beds, so this one here and the other one across from the tomatoes, those are fixing to go in. Um, we're gonna have carrots and beets and uh, some other greens for kind of the second wave secession planting for greens there. We have tried a couple of experimental things not experimental, but for us, for this zone, zone 6A, uh, we did try nine uh, fafa bean plants, and three of them made it through early spring. Um, and they haven't, so far, haven't worked out really well. Uh, they have already flowered, but the flowers kind of turned black, and... Uh, you know, I'm just not sure if we're going to get any beans off that or not. So that may be the last time that we, probably not the last time, but it'll be a while before we mess around with fafa beans again. Uh, I mentioned a minute ago the five-star tomatoes. So these two tomatoes on the end are five-star, and uh, they've just been pretty anemic compared to um, these other tomatoes, especially the ones that were in the wall of water uh, during the cold months, early spring. So anyway, we'll get these planted up eventually. Then uh, this barrel is loaded up. I think I've got three, three plants in here. These are all rainforest pepper plants, and these seeds were a gift from a seed order that uh, I did um, the, the guy's name escapes me right now, but he had sent me uh, rainforest, and I've got one nice pepper on here already that's coming along. And so I'm excited about those. And then we've got a couple of new raised beds here on the north side of this arch trellis, which is goes up and over. Um, and... <laughs> I, it looks overgrown with potatoes, and it is. Uh, we had saved our own seed potatoes from last year and planted them on the outer edge here. Uh, and, you know, like seven, eight weeks went by, and there was no growth at the surface. I dug around, couldn't find them. So I replanted Yukon Golds in the middle of the bed, and this bed's about two foot wide. You can see down there the sweet potatoes. And so uh, in about the same orientation as sweet potatoes, I planted Yukon Gold. And then I had planted uh, Christmas tree lima beans on this southern edge of the bed, outer edge of the bed. And the germination just hasn't been great with these. They get the, the Christmas lima beans. They have a real good rating and reputation for most people, but... Uh, I got fairly poor germination, so I'm looking forward to getting my own seeds and doing my own germination test on uh, my own seeds. And so we'll just see how the potatoes turn out. It's kind of an experiment. These are sweet potatoes that we are growing from our own slips. Uh, we had one of them die. There's kind of an empty spot here. 
So this is our first time doing sweet potatoes. We'll see how that turns out. Um, this barrel has El Oro del Ecuador is the name of the pepper. And again, I think it's, you know, uh, a rarer type seed. Uh, you don't see it a lot. So we'll see how those turn out. And then over here in the compost pile, we had some beds we were trying to get established for this spring, but just didn't get it done. And so we're going to use this composting area and actually plant in it. And so we've got two Waltham butternuts here. Last year, I think we had five vines and that was way too much. Uh, they stored great, they tasted great, but um, just don't need that many. We've got some volunteers here we'll have to keep picked out. Volunteer corn will need to get picked out. And then here in the shade, or right now it's in the shade, we have a North Georgia candy roaster that has popped up and really excited to see that go. There was actually another seed. I may have to plant another one. I only put two seeds out and one of them obviously germinated and the others didn't. So moving back down, we already talked about these are gonna be succession planting beds, but along the outer edge, we've got a little bit of fenugreek right here. And then we've got a lot of cilantro that was growing on the actual edge. Then we've got eight of these cucumbers that run to the middle. And then there's a different eight from there on to the end. And these eight are saved seed from a volunteer cucumber that I believe was originally burpee pickler uh, seed stock but these volunteered last year out in the lawn where we had a, a cucumber expire and just let it go there and uh, it was just really hardy last year we got a ton of pickles off one vine and so we're doing eight this year right there and they're going to fill up hopefully this arch trellis on this side and then these remaining eight these are slicers up against the trellis. Those are Market More 76 uh, slicers. And then we just got cilantro in there. And we just cut a bunch of it to freeze dry. And we're eating a lot of it fresh right now, too. And then so this area, let me back up a little bit. And so you can see where the grass is dead here. So last summer, we put tarps out here to kill off the weeds and it, it killed off everything. There were a few um, bindweed in there. And then last week, sorry for the shadow, we planted uh, corn. This is Cherokee white corn. And it's all germinating pretty well, actually. I counted this morning, there were nearly 30 plants germinated that you could see. And I planted 86 total in here and I think there's 56 of saved seed uh, red burgundy okra a long version we're kind of selectively saving seed from the real long pods and so that one I think 56 okra plants over there and then this area and it's about I don't know three feet two and a half feet uh, by six feet something like that and that has red am amaranth, uh, the Hopi variety of red amaranth. And those are germinating and starting to grow. So hopefully you can see those amaranth plants starting to come up there. There's quite a few of them. And so that'll be really interesting. We've never done amaranth, and uh, if nothing else, the, the birds will like it. So now let's shift over to this raised bed. We don't have this mulch yet, but we'll get around to that. That's not as critical as the plants. So we've got some volunteer bachelor button here, obviously, and some red petunias. But this bed was intended to be uh, our ginger bed. And you can see we started ginger inside and it looked really good. It rooted really well. It started growing, um, you know, leafage. But you can see there it's, uh, it is not thriving. And so there's one here. There's one here. There's still a little bit of green right there. 
but this is just not doing well. So there are a couple buds there, but I, it's just really not thriving. There's a new bud there maybe. Um, it's not mushy or anything. It's just not enjoying where it's at. And so instead of just leaving this the whole season, uh, we've decided to do some Valencia peanuts. And I'm not sure, we haven't grown peanuts here in zone 6A before, but uh, we're gonna give it a try. These are some Valencia seed peanuts with inoculant. So all the black stuff is inoculant. And I'm not sure I'm using the inoculant right either. So all you peanut growing experts out there that know how to use the inoculant to help with their germination and growth, you know, let me know in the comments um, what we're doing wrong. I'm not sure we're not just supposed to wet the peanuts and then, you know, roll them around. But uh, we're trying to do the slurry method uh, to do this. So anyway, we're going to get some seeds poked in here yet today and uh, see if we can get some peanuts germinated here in a week or so. <clears throat> to clean this up here and get it covered. Again, we got these wasabi radishes here on the end. They're starting to crowd out the soft neck garlic. That other big row of garlic we looked at, those are hard neck, and these are save seed, saved uh, bulb soft neck. And uh, we got a few peppers and a bunch of cilantro, and we got peas in here. And there's more peppers on the back side. And so as these peas come out, they'll get a lot more sun and be a lot happier. Um, these three peppers are a Ken Star Starburst. So I'm excited to get those up and get those going. And we're, we're kind of at the end. We're probably not gonna get over to the herb and, and flower garden today. Uh, I need to pull those, those are bolting too. Um, this will be kind of the edge, the only flower garden that we really talk about today. But we've got some chocolate cherry sunflowers. Those bigger, taller looking plants right there are uh, chocolate cherry sunflowers and then intermix. These are all zinnias. And this area here is all something called Dahlia zinnia. And those are new for us this year. And then the other end here, these are some save seeds. Uh, zinnias and uh, some of those are lime green and yellows and reds and stuff and uh, we're just going to keep working this bed year after year out and reshaping it so those are all doing pretty good and we're staying on top of the weeds so that's great so that kind of wraps it up for the tour today that's what's going on at the frosty sith i guess i could talk about the trees at least while i'm walking by this is uh we talked about that brown turkey fig earlier uh, which is not really hardy for zone 6a uh, and so it has to put on new wood every year and i'm not sure if we'll get figs off of it this is a new fig tree that we planted this year and it's doing really really well this is a chicago cold hardy fig tree and it is hardy for this zone uh, you can actually grow it in, I think, five, up to zone five. Uh, but it's putting on new growth and... doing good. So maybe we'll get some figs off of it before the season's over. So that's the highlights for the walk around garden tour. Uh, coming up on May 25th, 2022. And if nothing else, we'll try and do these at least once a month. Uh, we have a lot of things going on, trying new things for us for this zone. And uh, you guys may have answers to some of the questions where we're having problems with certain plants. And we'd love to hear from you if you see something that we're doing and uh, you've got a solution uh, in an area that we're struggling in, please feel free to leave it in the comments. Uh, if you'd like to follow us on social media, check out Frosty Sith on Instagram. And we actually post a lot more of the non-backpacking stuff on Instagram. 
uh, and we use a lot of this food, as much of it as we can, to help prepare the freeze-dried backpacking meals that uh, we're fixing to take out into the Wind River Range uh, here shortly and uh, backpack with. So this is uh, fun for us, it's fun for youth, and it's a great way to augment the pantry and your backpacking meals. So stay tuned for a little bit more, and if you guys are interested, we'll just do more and more of these uh, gardening style videos over time. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll bring more content to you. And if nothing else, remember, whenever you can, get up, get out, live a little. See ya.